Uh, well, fuck it. All right, Deadman, are you ready? Uh, all right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to yet another episode of this wonderful podcast, Between the Hunt. Today, we've got a lot of exciting things to talk about, and I mean that unironically. Those aren't buzzwords. There's actually so many exciting things happening right now in the hunt space, and I am joined yet again by no better person to be talking about all this with than my co-host, Deadman. Hey, yo. So today... Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was I was trying not to cough. <laughs> that's a, that's awesome. <laughs> so today we've got several things to talk about. For those of you who are in the hunt space, you're probably aware Crytek finally communicated with us openly. They've been doing it a little bit in the backgrounds and bits and pieces, but we got a full on stream. Open letter to the community talking about several things coming up in the hut space, especially the engine update. We got a new DLC along with this, some story implications from that. Actually, some pretty major implications, even though you can't see it. If you read into, into it and read between the lines, there's a lot more in the background. And that comes to our lore piece today, where we'll be talking about uh, the, the Reckoning Son, as he's known now, as he would have been known as the Prodigal Son as well as his sister, the prodigal daughter, and Fort Karmic, a place that uh, has a pretty big chunk of history in their lives. Hello, everybody. For our viewers, you're probably going to be able to understand what is going on right now. But for our audio listeners, I'll have to fill you in. I have taken the liberty of utilizing Star Platinum, the world's ability to stop time, in order to relay a couple important messages to you before it's too late. Firstly, I would like to inform you that the podcast you're about to enjoy was recorded on Saturday, May 25th. However, between then and now, Crytek has released two videos regarding their upcoming commitment to communication with the Hunt Showdown community. The first is a video telling the world that there would be weekly updates, and the second, much more recent video, was the first of such. This second video is incredibly important to what's going on in Hunt right now, and frankly we would be remiss if we did not discuss it. But since the podcast was recorded in its entirety before this video came out, we took the liberty of recording our reactions to it on stream yesterday, where we discussed some of it in detail. I have attached this recording of this stream segment to this podcast episode toward the end. Stay tuned if you want our thoughts on that. And now my second message. A warning. In the lore segment of this podcast, we will be discussing the prodigal son and daughter, as well as for Karmic. However, there will be a few specific descriptors I use that actually describe Fort Bolden as I was confused of the image of it in my head. I only recently began playing the game again and streaming it even, so I didn't have the right idea. I assure you that the story discussed, the characters, the location, and the lore as a whole are completely intact and accurate, but I want to apologize for being confused and for the confusing language that you may hear in this segment. For the audio listeners who cannot see the image of the compound on the screen now, Fort Karmic is the giant fort with the brick and mortar walls surrounding its compound, dilapidated and destroyed. It has the two huge prison buildings in the middle, surrounded by scaffolding, ladders, stairs, and ledges, as well as the roofs on the top and the boards in between the buildings connecting them together. Fort Bolden is a Civil War-looking structure very identifiable as it is made of logs in the walls and surrounded by a, a bit of a boggy marsh and a lot of trenches. I simply want to get this warning out of the way so that I could save myself several comments discussing what a dingus I am. It is only after describing the entirety of the fort that I finally have a realization in the recording and correct myself on what the fort is. I hope none of this will infringe on your enjoyment of this podcast and I appreciate your time. 
I would like to thank Jotaro for allowing me to use Star Platinum the world's ability to stop time in order to save this podcast before it was too late. Now back to the video. As well as we're going to look at some community posts later, maybe talk about the alpha and how far hunts come with the new engine update coming soon, the community sentiments. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about today, but with that intro out of the way, I do have a preamble. <laughs> So that you can spend the first uh, two minutes of this, instead of a 45 minute intro, I've cut it down. Uh, a two minute intro, just me talking about some a few things. So, again, please do not dislike this video because there is not an iceberg in it. As of now, Deadman and I, he's given me some help, we've been collecting the footage ourselves. I couldn't get anybody to actually come to me and uh, offer to help me get footage and I'm tired of waiting because I really want this iceberg to happen. So, I'm pushing through the pain, and along with him by my side, we're getting some kills in the bayou, and we are looking for all this footage so that we can get this iceberg out as soon as possible. Don't assume that stuff like this podcast is getting in the way of getting that footage, it's still happening. Believe me, you will get the iceberg as soon as possible. It'll be complete, it'll be amazing, it'll be huge. I'm adding so much more to it, and I'm fixing some of the stuff from the first half of the video, Rather, the first half of the iceberg, you're going to be pleasantly surprised, and it'll be great. But going forward, we are still doing uh, my community survey for the hunt's balance. You can find the links below. You can fill that out. It's got a bunch of stuff in there asking you for your opinions on the balance of hunt right now. Not anything like death cheat, etc. Blah, blah, blah. Or events or cheaters. Just the balance itself. Does this gun bother you? Does everything having bleed bother you? Do you think that flash bombs are useless? Whatever it is that is bothering you in the balance space, I want you to go to that survey completely free. You don't have to sign in. Please fill it out. Be honest and be yourself. And if you want a further opportunity there, there is still the opportunity for anybody who wants to jump into this community project, because I will be making a video at some point in the future, uh, if you want to possibly make your own 60 second or 120 second voice recording talking about your balance issues with Hunt, or even make a small video fully edited that's 60 seconds long, just to get your to get your content out there, to really get your point across, to spread your avenues, all of those opportunities are also included not only listed in the survey, but in our community Discord, which you can find below. If you want to talk to some cool people in there, can, uh, participate in these community events, I'd love to have you there. And one more thing, I, pr <laughs> I promise it's only one more thing. A anybody who watched the, or listened to the last video, it was a 45 minute intro, so this is, <laughs> this is not bad at all. But, <laughs> don't, don't, bro. <laughs> don't giggle at me, talk. <laughs> It was only 45 minutes because it was our pilot episode. Like, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> but as of yesterday, we finally hit 500 subs on this channel. And I applied for the YouTube partnership program and they accepted me. So I can't get ad money on my videos yet because, uh, you know, whatever. Fuck me, I guess. But I can finally have memberships and super reacts super chats all that good stuff so that inspired me to not only stream more on this channel which i'll tell you more about later in some comments and posts and whatever but if you've ever wanted to support this channel and you've, you're already subscribed you've already shared it you already like the videos you already comment love you guys so much you make my day every day if you ever wanted to drop just a dollar to support this channel you now can Easily on YouTube with a couple clicks. Again, nobody fucking do that unless you have the capabilities of doing that. I added the dollar tier, even though YouTube does it tells you not to. <laughs> when you're making the memberships, it tells you not to make cheap memberships. But I'm not going to be an asshole. There's a dollar there just because I know times are tough. If all you've got is a dollar and you want to throw it at me just to help support this community and all these projects we do, be my guest. I would love to have you there. And if you have more money you want to spend, there's a couple other options there too. You can find those on the channel. That's everything I needed to talk about. And before I lose my fucking voice for talking for 30 minutes straight, we've got some things we can actually talk about. So, I'm not as well acquainted with this as Deadman is, 
But, because I was working during this whole stream and I haven't been able to catch up, but Crytek finally hit us with a f their full-on communication stream. So, what what are the things that they covered in that? We, we'll go in detail in a, in a minute, but like just the general ideas that they covered. Yeah, it's, um, so, it was just a short, like, I think, seven-minute video? Like, they premiered it or whatever. Um... But the basics were, like, their plan going forward, like, how they're going to basically communicate once a week at the minimum on YouTube, for example, that they'll have a video out, like, once a week. They'll have, uh, you know, posts on social media in their Discord, different things like that. And um, pretty much we're going to be getting information every week at least until the engine up upgrade at the very least so i was like okay so we're getting kind of back to communication levels before um tide of shadows i think is like because tide of shadows is when they start like they were still kind of talkative but it feels like that the the tides trilogy is kind of like we're there to like kind of keep it on the down low for a time period because I guess they were just ramping up. I think that's the only thing that happened. But yeah, that video went over everything. I think the first one this today is the 27th. I think there's another video coming out tomorrow about it. And it should be... I don't know what it's about. I forgot. But it's supposed to address some more stuff. Like, I know they're addressing cheating soon. Oh, bleh. don't say that word in this house. Ugh. Don't fucking do not say that word in this house, dog. I'm tired of it every day. He's, I'm still on the hunt showdown subreddit, and I get the notifications every day. I get like ten fucking posts uh, pinged to my phone. Hey, cheaters, 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 anybody? Cheaters? Uh, cheaters? Y'all you, see these cheaters, bro? Uh, yeah, I'm, and uh, <laughs> and for and for people who think that we don't believe that there's cheaters, we I literally had a cheater in a game when I was playing trios. And I've reported him to Crytek. He had a ban 80 days prior. I, I don't think anybody in their right mind would say that there isn't cheaters in Hunt. But, I mean, there might be some. I don't know. Uh, but it is relatively rare because they soar up to six stars so quick. Right, and then, yeah. And usually, they're like if they're blatantly cheating, they're usually caught very fast. Um. But it's also like it's like I said to somebody I don't remember who I was talking about. Any online game, you're gonna have cheaters, and I think we had mentioned this briefly in the last episode. But yeah, like it's just like you know, I literally just had to report somebody. So it's not like we're saying that. It's just it's tiresome when it's a there are a lot of false negatives or false yeah. positives. False positives. False positives. Yeah. No, that's. And that's a reputation. It's funny you say that. That's a reputation that I get because it's just because of some of like the word, the verbiage I've used, some of the words, and the way I've like construed some of my arguments. Unfortunately, a lot of people get the idea that I don't think there are cheaters in Hunt at all. It's not that I know there are, and I do believe that there are probably more in the last month than there have been lately. Because just because there's truly such a community movement against the cheaters and speaking out. That has not happened on this level ever. So I do think there's more. But I still do not think it is as many as some people say. And I very often, 9 out of 10 times, see posts without footage, without proof. They just take my word for it. And I, I don't like that. And I want people to just spend 5 minutes spectating somebody after they get killed sussily. Just take your 5 minutes, do your due diligence before you report that person. Because if everybody did that... Our reports would matter so much more because there wouldn't be 10,000 false positives for Crytek to sift through before they get to the actual cheaters. So, there are cheaters. I'm not going to say there aren't, but just do due diligence. And remember, sometimes people are just really good, or they got a lucky shot, or they were in the right place at the right time. You never know. Yeah. Like, as an, um, as an aside, there is basically... Um, <laughs> excuse me. Um, like I could tell this guy was either really sus or he had the luckiest game of his life. The only reason why I don't believe that is because when you have had the game for two hours 
And I don't know anybody who's brand new to Hunt Showdown has a KD of 10.57 in the first two hours and you kill every single person with a headshot and the only shot that you missed was because you got aim punched into oblivion. And I was like, no, you're either a smurf or a <laughs> cheater. And I'm just, no, 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 no. It's so we, funny, bro, that you, even when you have all the reason to believe somebody's a cheater, you're still trying to find ways to justify or defend it or like to defend mm -hmm. them and say like, just maybe they aren't. But there's, there's so many people there's so many hunters in this community where the moment they get killed once, cheater, cheater. Yeah. <laughs> well, because I, I, I do want to believe that people want to play hunt for the love of hunt, like right, right for the hunter, and, yeah, yeah. And there, and there's going to be people that don't, and that's the cheaters. Like, and you know, if a cheater wants to come forward and say, "Well, I love hunt. I just like cheating," it was like, "No, you, then you don't love the fucking game." <laughs> like, I'm sorry. <laughs> You don't love the game. You, you like, don't love the game. So, <laughs> like, you're wrecking everybody else's fun for yours. And while you can argue that's pretty much the entire point of hunt, I have fun when I die. On, yeah, like, me too. on a like, just if we're being silly, like, yeah. play, there play is for fun. It's a fucking video game. That's the whole point of a video game is to play for fun, dude. Yeah. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with like kind of going like, oh yeah, no, we're gonna like, you know, like getting serious, getting intense and stuff like that. That is also in the nature of fun, but you gotta have fun. You gotta have fun. Yeah, it'll be even more uh everybody will have their the hell is it? Every old dog has its moment. No, I fucking whatever. They'll all have their moment when that uh that tournament weekend thing gets added, that idea I came up with when they add that and they don't credit me, uh that they will that will happen. And then and then everybody can have their moment. Right, 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 right. That would be so sick, dude. It'd be so much fun. <laughs> Get all the boys on. Everybody's got their fucking gamer hats on. Everybody's got their G Fuel, their gamer subs. <laughs> and everybody's like, all right, let's drop in 20,000 uh, hunt dollar buy-in. Fucking whoever gets out gets 100K. Bam. Oh, it would be sick. Fucking put two bounties and a rod and Raja on there. Uh, oh, great. yeah. Uh, oh, I almost forgot. So we're just going to summarize and then we'll get into specific topics. The engine update is now officially coming August 15th. It's been rumored for so long and we'll talk about the further details of the engine update and what to actually expect because a lot of people don't know what an engine does or is. So we'll do that a little later. But August 15th is when that's coming out. The film grain issue. Uh, this is pressing. I can put some screenshots on the screen here for anybody watching. The film grain was controversial. So a big update happened like a month ago when everybody, I can't say everybody, many, 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 many people were telling everybody else, hey, my game looks awful. I can't see anything. There's this crazy film grain on the game now. What happened? This was not documented. And it was an argument back and forth, kind of like the cheater thing. People arguing that this is happening. This is not happening. I can't see a difference in these comparison pictures. I take confirmed that it actually did happen, uh, but not in the way people thought. So what was it like a graphics card issue or I believe it was a graphics uh, card uh, issue or something. I don't know. They didn't specify what caused the grain, just that it happened. And then they had reverted it. Right. Um, as far as the uh, as far as the everything else, like, um, because you're talking about with the weather, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the weather, something happened to where fog was kind of busted, and it was like I think getting foggy in buildings, like, which personally I think is cool, but also that's very terrible for visibility. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, um, because some of those buildings are already like terrible, but then there was also like. Uh, rain inside and like you know things that were on fire would get put out and it would also the rain would never stop and the server would act like it wasn't stopping so there was some stuff they just had to fix um, so but that all got patched I think I had just saw that there was like there was an issue I actually like looked at the Twitter real quick and that's why like I kind of zoned for a second uh, but there was an issue with the hot fix, um, and I think they had reverted it, but not completely. Because I know you and I were playing around that time period, and it looked fine. Yep, I thought uh, it was fine. 
but the, they didn't say what the error was. Um, so uh, single and double bounties are still available. And um, I think there's certain part. Maybe, you know what? Maybe that's why we didn't really get um, some of the other stuff, like uh, rain or anything like that. Oh, but probably. I I mean, I imagine they're they're pulling back on a lot of the things that put strain on their update schedule, like different weather effects coming back, because when you add more things to the game constantly, when you bring old stuff back, you gotta make sure it still works, and there's no hiccups. And that takes yeah. a lot of developer time, and that is something they cannot spare right now, trying to get this engine update out as fast as possible. Yeah. So I, I, well, I'm, I'm totally fine with the game not rotting, but like resting for a period of time before we finally get to our huge update coming up in August. Yeah. And from what it sounds like, it sounds like they're getting ready to roll it out again. Um, but they just had to fix something, so it just didn't affect it. But like single and doubles are back. And. That's more or less what I was concerned about, but I do miss the other times of day because God playing during the day all the time is boring. Yeah, it is. I like the night, the rain. Oh, rain was based. The fire mm -hmm. everywhere was also fun. Yeah, I miss a lot of it. Yeah, um, like the the fire, I think, will come back as a wild card, but... Eventually. Yeah. Well, the, I imagine they did away with wild cards for uh, not having them during the, the event. <laughs> So, which makes sense to me. And for those of you who have been keeping up with the DLC, some of you have been, I know, because I still see your Reddit posts complaining about more DLC. Uh, the Prodigal Son, now known as the Reckoning Son, is live. And he looks awesome, dude. There's so many memes about it in the Steam reviews, like, find finally, Slipknot in Hunt Showdown. That one is so good, dude. I think one of my other streamer friends, uh, her, like, I met her playing... Uh, during the day or whatever, we were both streaming on this at the same time, and uh, I saw a title on hers that said uh, "collaboration with Gerard Way," <laughs> <laughs> and I fucking I laughed. I wanted to go in there and tell her, "Oh, uh, dude, it was so funny." But no, he's uh, super cool. I like his one. His fucking trailer was insane. It's, like, they have they have gone so hard on the trailers for the last like ten or so DLCs. They have gone so hard because back in the day, y'all used to just be wide panning landscape, cinematic shots, slow, then a zoom in on the gun, maybe zoom in on the tool. Nothing really happened in the old ones. It was just it was very simple. But now. They're telling stories in the trailers. They've got action chore choreography going on. It's they're so cool. He had a there was like a flash of like PTSD almost. Because mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know, Prodigal Son's one of the very few military uh, confirmed hunters in the game. And you've got during that trailer, there's flashes in his mind of of visualizing his sister wanting to help her. And what what he's been going through, and it's so cool that so much story can be told in a fifty seven second trailer about a DLC in a game. <laughs> yep, and funny enough, those types of trailers started with the Lonely How. He was the first one that had a new style of trailer. Uh, his his was his was fucking nasty. Like they're so cool, dude. I, I keep bringing it up. The one that they just came out with like a month ago. Like Sheriff Harden burning a dude at the stake. Oh, oh, so, with so uh, gunpowder. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he's cool. gunpowder. Yeah, yeah, he's really fun. so good. These trailers, dude. The horror vibes in that one was mm, Chef's kiss. Yeah, give me more. I want, I want, I want a hunt animated series. To be honest, a lot. Everybody does, and I don't. I would be good for something like a red versus blue type of thing. But nobody has access to anything in Hunt for in the engine to do animations like that, so it wouldn't yeah. be possible unless Crytek did a huge like uh Dead by Daylight does this, like for their fog whisperers, their content creators that uh have partnered with them and signed NDAs and all these agreements, they give them way more access to different assets and certain things that nobody else has access to so that they can make cooler content. 
I would be so on board for Crytek doing that. That would oh, be yeah, very cool. Be. But I don't. Them being uh, particular for them, they're you know across the pond. I don't think they would be very willing to do that for the, a lot of their American audience in particular because I know they a lot of people overseas don't necessarily trust data and information being sent overseas that doesn't need to be here because leaks are right. miserable. And we and uh, the U.S. is notorious for leaks in companies and games. So like Twitter, fucking crazy. So imagine. I don't think they'd ever fucking do that. But if they ever wanted to take that dive, bro, I would be there day one with this tiny ass YouTube channel signing up. Like, please, yeah, I'll make Hunt Showdown abridged. Just give me the tools, <laughs> please. Imagine Hunt Showdown abridged. I could finally be the voice in Sheriff Harden's head, officially. Uh, for those yeah, of you who don't you know, even though he has a voice actor now, I'm still the voice in his head. So, even though you don't hear me, you'll he, he hears my voice in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, look at that. We've already made it pretty much through a couple topics, like one and a half in 24 minutes, plus the intro. We were we were forty five minutes in before our first intro was done in the last one. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I told y'all this was gonna be a lot faster and a lot better. So, <laughs> Zoe, bi yo, bitch, quit it. Thanks. She bargained at nothing. She's fucking a foot off the ground. She can't even see. Girl, girl, hey, Zoe, what? Fuck you. I can't wait to have to edit this out of the fucking Zoe. Please! <laughs> this is the worst fucking time to be doing this! Oh my god. Alright, give me one sec. You're good. Uh, we'll be back in a minute. I'm just letting them out. Okay, yeah, you're good. Alright, I'm back. You there? So based. Uh, okay. <laughs> fucking mic back in front of my face. Okay, so... Uh, we're going to get on to finishing topic two here, which would be community, uh, communication, sentiments, etc. Crytek communication. We've already covered Crytek. Uh, community sentiments. Um, oh, there's a lot of people. Uh, it's, uh, it's so hard to talk about <laughs> community sentiments in our showdown because uh, there's always so much backlash instantly, no matter what we're talking about. Like, yeah. Like we get an engine update. Okay, cool. See you next year. Like, like uh, we talk about balance. Uh, okay, great. So, it, w w when are they going to fix money? Uh, there's nothing you can do without people complaining about it. But I think, luckily, a lot of people are at least excited for the engine update. If not cautiously optimistic, they are excited. Um, yeah, I think so. Because I know the the people I talk to and have been gaming with, because like I said, I've been meeting other solos, and it's like varying hours. Like yeah. none of them have like my level of skill, um, or not even my level of skill, just my level of like playtime. Uh, but everybody is like, oh yeah, no, this is gonna be awesome. Like they're just really chill about it. Um. And I think that's a better metric to go off of, because it's like, the people who are perpetually mad making perpetual things, you know, if they're not just venting, like, because we all need a vent once in a while, um, and they're pot, like, constantly drilling, it's like, oh, this is stupid, this is dumb, like, what are they doing, blah, 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 it's like, it's almost as if none of these guys have ever made a fucking game before. But, no, I, no, I, no, I agree. I, I mean, to be fair, if they haven't, a lot of these people haven't made a fucking game before. <laughs> Yeah, Good sarcasm. Yeah. yeah, so um also you you brought this up. I wanted to talk about it. I I am uninformed. So you said Rock had an interview with David Fifield. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh Mr. Fifield or beautifully bearded uh fellow is he get director, game director right now of for Hunt Showdown at Crytek. Yeah, he uh Rock was so it was him. It was it was David Fifield, and he was playing with uh, a streamer named James Delaney, who also works for Crytek, and he's a QA, I think, with them, which is good, because uh, talk about somebody who could break the game, it would be a streamer in Hunt Showdown. Like, that's... Of course. <laughs> like, that, and that's the thing, is that the other, the other side of it is that 
um, the bits that I have seen of uh, James playing, he's a really chill dude. Like, he's not trying to always play the meta. He's not trying to do silly things. Like, you know, he's he's he kind of covers the gambit. He's a really quiet guy, too, which I found kind of surprising. So, uh, but he was playing with James and then Rockta. And then, um, most everybody in the Hunt community has known or at least run into Rockta Z in some fashion. And I think Rock is pretty chill. I don't watch all of his videos, but I actually think Rock is pretty chill. Like he, he's a very good player. And I think what I like about Rock is that he went into this wanting to ask questions from his community, which is a larger community, and just grabbed ten community questions. And he was like, "Look, I'm going to ask these questions, but don't expect big leaks. It's kind of more general knowledge." And there was some silly ones. It was like, I think somebody asked, it's like, oh, is there a tractor on the new map or something? Like, you know, they were having fun with it too. Like, <laughs> but. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like, and that's the thing. Like, cause you know, they mentioned it's like David Fifield Hunter when, and the funny thing <laughs> was, like the funny thing was is that when they said it, um, Fifield actually said, it's like, well, the concept art's been up, but the art director said it's cheesy. <laughs> So they're not going to put it in the game. <laughs> and he also said on the other side of it, and this is this is also true because I think it's also unique. Like it's people. There are there are a lot of people who make jokes, and like that's kind of the meme to say. But he's like, but also people don't know what they want. Sometimes they say they want something, but they don't actually want it. And I was like, you know what? That's kind of fair. Like I can kind of see like kind of being cautious about certain things that the community is asking for, especially when it's just a loud uh, one. But I that's don't, I don't want David Fifield himself in there as like a, hey, wow, he just wandered into Louisiana. I want, I would be totally fine with just one modeled after his face so those who know how, what he looks like would know that's David Fifield, but then have it just be a hunter cano- canonically in the story, like any other I'm- hunter. I mean, to be honest, you could just grab the Colbert and have the same thing. Oh, fuck <laughs> off. It's not that. He's not. The Colbert is grimy, bro. David, David Colbert is Santa Claus, Claus, my guy. He's Santa Claus, my guy. He what? does look like Santa Claus. He does look like Santa Claus. I think that, that, I think that was the whole point. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me. But they also mentioned, um, that basically the engine, because there was there was mention, and I I have mentioned this on a couple of occasions, and I think it's still going to help, um, just because I know some people who have worked with engines and stuff like that. Porting all of the stuff over to a new engine is going to help them do things quicker. So they said it, uh, like David had said, it takes a long time to do anything like a map or a boss or anything like that, and. Basically, what's going to end up happening with this new engine, they are going to be able to accomplish those tasks quicker, which is good. Um, It's like an investment now, because investing all that time and resources now to get the hub, essentially, I would say almost Hunt 2.0 up and running, that that allows for so much more to happen in the future, so much quicker. Yeah, and and he, and David framed it as like, he's... How they're viewing the August launch for that update, they're viewing it as Hunt relaunch. Like, that that was the verbiage. They didn't say Hunt 2.0 explicitly, but they said it is basically a relaunch of Hunt Showdown. Um, and I think that has some exciting implications. Um, I know it's going to suck for some of the console console people out there because... They've been playing on Xbox and PS4 forever, but also those very, very, very aged hardware. I I personally still love, you know, the Xbox One and some of the games I have played on there, but also my Xbox One's been busted for years. But, you know, they basically said that they initially got that announcement out of the way back in, I think it was November, they announced that. Um, they wanted to give a minimum of six months for people who had older hardware because, you know, the, we, it's like, yeah, we, we want to give you all time. We want to give you all, you know, the ability to, like, decide if you want to upgrade or not. And they're right. Like, basically, the 
the engine update is going to affect less than or like 10% or less of the current player base, which is still a lot of people, but they're like, you know, this is also why we're giving you a big heads up. We want to move forward with the game and make it better. So I think that, like, I think they made a good choice overall. Uh, I'm still fucking excited, dude. Say what? I'm so excited, dude. Oh, uh, yeah. I am I am interested to see what they do with Colorado. Yeah, me too. There's so there's so much potential here and I can't wait for uh having to make a set, a third iceberg video because of all the extra shit they add in the new one. Yeah, we still need to I still need to go back and look for those other easter eggs, but yeah, we we still got some work there to be done and uh <laughs> I st- I, st- I still got to got to beg you to go back to Fort Karmic and fucking get some footage of Fort Karmic for this. Oh, that won't be hard. Um, nobody likes go, fighting there so it'll be fine nah, just go on Oceana it's fine <laughs> it's just, just, uh, so we brought up I do want to talk about this for just a minute or two everybody keeps bringing up engine update engine update engine update a lot of people don't actually know what an engine does in a game so I'm not going to go full detail here but to summarize it, essentially, think of it like a car, right? So the, the, the game is the whole car. The car can't run without the engine. So no matter how pretty the car looks, no matter how souped up every other piece in that car is, unless that is a quality engine, it fucks up the whole car. You you can't run as well. You can't go as fast. You're gonna break down more often. This is like the best analogy for an engine in a game that I can give you. So, a huge 2.0 for that engine, quote unquote, is a game changer because even though, get, uh, let's say graphics wise, it'll be a noticeable improvement immediately, but nothing that'll make you go, "Wow, this is worth waiting three years for." But it's the implications of what you, is coming later that makes the engine exciting because the possibilities of new bosses are on the table. The possibilities of adding another team into the bounties is on the table. Uh, the, yeah. the boss, there's so much new weather events. There's so much they can add if they get the old engine out of the way. Yeah. And, and they did say that it is uh, with the engine update, it is a marriage of having the new engine and the uh and the code like the back end code like for you know like net code stuff like that cuz the other thing is, is that the bigger game modes or big or like increasing trios cuz that was also mentioned in the, in the video um increasing it because they feel like and I, and I, and I kind of agree with this sentiment because I'm not the biggest fan of trios I'm not huge into it. I love the chaos of duos because that's how I started the game. Um, and trios, albeit, can get very, very crazy. But once you kill nine people, it's over. Um, they have talked about that there's potential and they're looking at it. Nothing to announce, but they're looking at the ability of possibly adding more hunters to trios. Because the engine will allow them to do that. Because, like, if you think about it, if all 12 hunters are in one compound, that probably stresses the game out a bit. And then... Especially all if they're all throwing head- fucking big dynamites and shit. Oh, yeah. And then just, like... Because that's the thing, is that you have a whole slew of other things when you add even just one extra hunter to the mix. Um, so, but they want to make it to where, like, because trios out of the two is the most predictable. A hundred percent. Having played solo v trios and solo v duos, um, one solo v trios is easier, in my opinion, uh, and solo duos is the harder mode because one, there's less of a curve in solo duos for MMR, but having that that those extra hunters in solo trios will kind of bring it more in line with duos and making it more interesting to stay in the game because. There's been trios games where I've just where me and me and my teammates just walked over three, and it was just like, oh, okay, well that's it, <laughs> like just whatever. 
I, I, I mean, I get where you're coming from. There's more variables. There's more f fights happening, re-upping, essentially. So th there's a lot more that can happen in duos, per se. So I, I get where you're coming from. Um, I do. For me, the only reason I like trios more is because I get to play with an extra friend. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no, and I agree. That's why I play it still. I'm not like, I'm not like oh, no, I don't want to play trios or, you know, whatever the fuck. Um. Yeah. I do still like playing trios. It's just as far as like a game challenge standpoint, it's usually not very challenging. Yeah, um, no, trios is definitely it's it's easier, especially if you got uh, like seasoned teammates that know what they're doing. You can get carried. Yeah, no, and that's. I mean, it was just like it just. I did this the other day. Uh, was hanging out uh, with my buddy Bob, and I want to say it was. I think Bob and Phoenix, I think, were the two I was playing with. Um, I killed literally everybody on the server, including sure. them. I had managed to kill both of them, too. Like, I killed <laughs> my teammates and I killed everybody else with the prodigal son. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yikes. so it was just it was just fun. Like, it, it, it was a fun time because I think trios really trios is the one game mode right now, I think, that does better. In single bounty, because, you know, this is, you know, the update just happened, so single uh, single and doubles are back. That was the one thing that it kind of did better, but not all the time. Yeah. Because having everybody there in that one game that I can think of was really nuts and really fun. But I think them doing that and then doing, uh, having the ability to do game modes quicker and, you know, shit like that. Oh yeah, that's one I didn't even talk about. Yeah, you know, new game modes. That's more, way more on the table with this update. Yeah, hundred percent. Because, like I said, they're changing the back end. Uh, they'll probably. What I think is, is that with the um, with the new engine, where they're able to kind of streamline some of that stuff, they'll be able to, like, I don't know. For example, like they edited uh, Fort Karmic for the shooting range and made it more of like a deathmatch map, so to speak. So they'll be able to do that for like. I don't know, let's say Prison. Prison would be a really fun deathmatch map because it's huge. It's got a couple different areas. Like, you can fight out in the houses. You can fight in the prison, across the prison, you know, long corridors. And they'll be able to change it to where it's like, you know, this isn't there in the bounty hunt mode, but this is in, in this deathmatch mode. Almost kind of like, I think you could have, like, the deathmatch modes is kind of like um, a post-bounty hunt type thing like it's a couple of years later kind of shit like you could tie it tie some lore to it it's like oh yeah this is this used to be nickel's prison and there's something happening or whatever the fuck explain why the monsters are gone or keep the monsters in who knows dude oh my god it would be just just came idea came to my head four person game mode it drops you into a, a compound the size of like the training uh the training range the shooting range, and then uh, you all get a random gun, and those shits uh, spray like uh, spread around the whole compound. Uh, last man standing wins. Everybody maybe gets one res. Be sick. Yeah, make it kind of more of an intense one, and have two variations of it where Dude. it's like an actual death match, but Ugh. also like one life. Oh my god, bro! I would I would play so many games of that every day. It would be so fucking intense. It'd be good stream content. It'd be so much fun. Yeah, and I agree. Like, and honestly, the one we were talking about the other day when we were streaming together on yesterday, uh, with um, talking about like um, the wild target bounty. Yep. Like they could do so much cool stuff with that. No, they have, there's so much potential, dude. They just have to realize it. Uh, I think they are. They're finally uh, more open to the idea of uh, game modes and stuff that aren't just bounty hunt, but. I think they've definitely wanted to do, I think for longer than people think, personally, having followed dev streams and stuff, they have definitely wanted to do more game modes, I think, for a very long time. But I think with a game and systems like Hunt has, it's not something like Call of Duty or even like Halo, where the, si like, the game mode doesn't affect the game play if that makes sense. Right. And I think that's a problem when it comes to Hunt Showdown and how unique its systems are. Because you have, like, you know, how many, like, 
the like the health bar system, just as an example. Like, what are you going to do about fire ammo in a death match? Like, are you just going to die? Like, you know, I think that's what they're considering. Like, how can we make this fun? Like, do we say no to fire bombs and custom ammo? Like, do we only do regular ammo? How are traits going to be handled? How are, you know, I think they have this, like, this whole ecosystem that they have to kind of consider. Because Soul Survivor makes sense. It's basically baby bounty hunt. Like, it's solo. You go in, you get a hunter, you uh, on-site procurement, so you get weapons and stuff as you go. But, like, in a deathmatch, how do you how do you do that? How do you balance it? Like, do you right. do... Every, everyone starts with a tier one loadout. You have these traits always. Do you always have doctor? Do you have stam and bit shots? Do you have antidote shots? Like, that's what I mean, is that, like, there's so many systems in Hunt that I think creating a new game mode, one, has to be unique and I feel, like, very, like, kind of Hunt-oriented. And two, how do you apply things like the burning and stuff like that to them? Like, do you just char the health bar or do you burn the bars off? And you see how long you could go until you respawn or the next round or something like that. So I think that's why it's harder for a game like Hunt to put in a, another mode. Though everybody wants it, and I know they all want to see it. It's kind of like how I hear about the private servers. Private servers have been like asked for for at least five years. Yep. And I think they're getting around to it. They're just trying to make sure the back end is going to be able to handle it. Because that stuff is a nightmare, I'm sure. So, I think we'll see it. I think we'll... we'll I would say at least within the year of, of us getting the engine update, we'll probably see one more game mode. At the very least. Or at least a significant alteration to one of the current ones where there's like, I don't know... Another, another wild card or something. Yeah. Yeah, like a hardcore weekend or something like that where you go in and it's bounty hunt, but like you have no HUD elements or something like that. Yep. That, that would be fucking cool. <laughs> it would be interesting at the very least. Yeah, well, and the other thing was that I saw a challenge when uh, one guy did where um, I believe it was Vambas, uh, the streamer, had it to where he removed the HUD elements. Everybody, like, There's a lot of people in the community, if you don't know, you can turn off the majority of your HUD elements and they're just not there. What he did was he did that. And then on top of that, couldn't touch his map unless he was at a cart. <laughs> and I was like, that is actually such an interesting way to play hunt. That is such an the interesting hunt way showdown to Nuzlocke. Yeah, basically like you get in and you get to do a, a challenge, but it's just a challenge. It's like, you know, he's at a disadvantage compared to everybody else. So. Now that, now that bro, you and me fucking a month's worth of content right there. I'm telling you the hot shot on Nuzlocke. We can only, oh, yeah. you, you can only use each gun tool, consumable, whatever, like uh, once. And when you die, you lose it. You oh, got to see God. how long you could last. That would like, be sick. Like three rounds. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking uh, welcome to the well, hunt showdown nuzlocke. Hey, guys, well, shout off in the comments, y'all, for the eight people that made it to this point in the video. Uh, if you would be interested in watching the hunt showdown nuzlocke challenge, uh, it, it, let us know in the comments. <laughs> and, and if you have any ideas for that yourselves, let us know because uh, the more brains on a cool idea, the better the and more cool the idea gets. Yeah, or gun game, gun game's fun. Uh, so, <clears throat> now that we have discussed what's happening, we've discussed the, uh, the engine, we've discussed communications, uh, everything Crytek's doing, the people, how they're feeling, it's finally time, y'all, to get to what is becoming my favorite segment of each of these casts, to talk about the thing we brought up earlier. We've got three today, actually. This is our lore segment, so today, I've got three things to talk about. Our newest member of the Hunt Showdown cast, that is the Prodigal Son, or as he's known now, the Reckoning Son. We have his sister, the Prodigal Daughter, who's been in the game for about much longer than he. And the location that best interacts with their history together, or Karmic. Beginning with our newest addition himself, 
the prodigal son. Scroll down. So he himself, he came with a drilling skin, the Scottfield Model 3 Swift, and the dynamite stick known as uh, the Soldier's Brother, the Brave Charge, and the Breach Blast, respectively. Great skins, by the way. <clears throat> the reckoning for Sarah Burden came in the shape of a man clad in an old uniform, his face hidden behind an iron mask. He was more than a prodigal son. He was a brother to a sister. On the day he returned, the prodigal daughter had slipped up and found herself staring down the barrel of a gun. Her assailant pulled back the hammer and paused. There was someone else emerging from the ashen fog. The assailant barely had time to register the doppelganger before catching two shots in the chest and being blasted apart by a third. Sarah's savior wore a mask, but she would recognize him anywhere. Richard Rick Burton, her twin. He had followed his mother's footsteps in a way that Sarah never could, and enlisted as soon as he was of age. It wasn't long after that when an official letter came to say that he'd been lost in a brave charge in battle and was now buried in the Black Hills. Sarah always blamed that letter for setting off the series of events that led to her mother's death. The day she passed, Sarah engraved Richard on a bullet. Rick knew that he didn't deserve to be greeted with open arms, but he had amends to make. In the years since he'd left, he'd lived as a dead man. He had no papers, and did dirty work, the type of work that needed an iron mask. The skills he picked up along the way would make him a deadly ally in the hunt. The prodigal son knew there was a bullet out there with his name on it. He figured it best to keep it close. That's so fucking cool. Im imagine, imagine somebody waiting to kill you and then you're like, hey, no, 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 no. I'll help you instead. You can kill me later. Worry about that later. Yep. <laughs> and I mean, it's a, it's a whole thing. Family stuff's weird. <laughs> it, well, it, well, in Hunt Showdown, families uh, typically aren't blood. <laughs> They're, they, are, they are formed through hardship. Oh, yeah. And the fact that we're starting to see more and more Related hunters is actually kind of interesting. No, it it is cool, and it, and I love seeing those little beats because then they get to tie in so many stories together, and they and it opens up a lot of paths that weren't there before. Because before, uh, like like Redneck's daughter, Prodigal Son, Prodigal Daughter, etc. Most of our hunters they kind of existed in a vacuum. Like they rarely interacted with each other lore wise that we were aware of, besides little little bits here and there, maybe a trailer where they just yeah. are shooting together. But now, with these bits, there's so much stories getting tied together. It's it's really cool. I love it. Yeah, like, and you, and you would see, like, certain tidbits. Like, you know, for example, uh, like, nobody knows that the Lonely Howl, Dire Wolf, and Luna Wolf are a family. Legitimately. So They are, they are blood. Actual blood. And uh, the mom and dad are not happy. Because if a little correction to my lore video when I did one of them. Um, there's debate whether Dire Wolf is still alive or not. Because there's stuff that suggests that the Howl killed him, but there's also information that suggests that he's still alive. So, who knows? <laughs> and I love that. I, lo I love that there's just, like, just enough that you could, like, kind of go either way. And, uh, and seeing that as we've started out our lore discussion in media res, meaning that we've started it in the middle of a story... It's time to finally dig a little further back and piece it all together, beginning with the prodigal daughter, the sister to the reckoning son. Many come to the bayou to forget their past, but Sarah Burton came to confront it, bringing along a Caldwell, a Sparks LLR, and a hunger for revenge, known as the Harbinger and the Reckoning, re uh, respectively. Burton's mother had risked life and limb during the Civil War to pass information to the Union. After the war, her deeds were recognized and celebrated, and she received a uniform symbolic of that final victory. Through her death, that uniform was passed down to her daughter, along with a dark legacy, modeled by with betrayal, cruelty, and treachery. The flowers still fresh on her mother's grave, Burton set out for Louisiana, where she vowed to destroy those who had a hand in her mother's death. Through her handiwork with the, with the Harbinger and the Reckoning, Burton became notorious in the bayou, allowing rumors to circulate that she was a veteran herself, ageless, reincarnated to channel a restless spirit for revenge. 
in in reading her story, very short by the way, because it just different time frame in 2021. Obviously, a whole different look at at uh, its stories. They were not. I don't think they were planning it long term like they are now at all. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. In that regard. you can tell like. They're being as vague as possible, using a lot of vague languages, because it's it's honestly just kind of cool DLC. The story is just for some flavor. I, It's cool how, even though this has no mention of the brother, they probably didn't even exist like for her, really, at, at that moment. Um, right. Even though that didn't happen, they, they just they brought it back later, and after reading his and then reading hers, I think his story does integrate her very well and makes it feel natural enough that it doesn't feel like it's just, oh, by the way, he's alive. Which is a problem with, like, a trope right. in, like, anime and a lot of shows, like, I died, but then I lived. <laughs> yeah. I died. I lived. I died again. Right. So I think they did a pretty good job pulling him into the story again while still maintaining that, yeah, she will probably kill him eventually, but not now. Uh, we'll worry about that later. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, and I think also you can even see on the differences in their Steam page, and I'm actually just pulling her up in game just to see if there's any differences, because now on the Steam pages, they have all of the all of the lore available to you on the Steam page. Yeah, on the underneath the, the, the weapons as well. Yep, I... Yeah. Yep, yep. So that's why I was like, you know what, I'm going to pull up while you're... Uh, while you were doing that, I was pulling up Hunt so I could find her and yeah. see if there's any other information. Right, if there's any uh, mention of him and her uh, and her weapon descriptions. So, okay, product. Uh, so her actual one says stories about her mother's heroism as a Union spy during the Civil War were Sarah Burton's only inheritance, which was mentioned. Um, awesome. So after, so after the funeral, she donned her mother's uniform, setting setting out to live up to that example and avenge the cruel circumstances of her mother's death. In the bayou, Burton found what she sought and her only a chance and her only chance for atonement. So she did something too. And so mm. so there there's something going on there and I wonder if the if the guns have anything extra on there. Because she had the reckoning. Um oh Oh, uh, ooh, okay. Interesting. I did not know that. Because uh, it's also been a hot minute since I fucking ran her sparks. So her spark says, Sarah Burton arrived in the bayou with five bullets. Five bullets engraved with five names, each a promise to fulfill her oath and take revenge on those who had ended her mother's life. Burton sparks LRR carries the bullets destined to restore justice to the Burton yeah to the Burton family which is those five bullets on the side of her pouch on the gun oh so so wow so they 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 took probably oh no and two of them are gone on the skin two of them are gone whoa that's so cool <laughs> see and i didn't even put that together cuz it's been so long so there was that so that's cool. So they took like kind of like a little tidbit and like a cool like flavor thing and kind of spun a story out of it. And it doesn't and like you you were saying it doesn't feel forced. And then the Harbinger was it the Harbinger? That's the one she had, right? Yeah. No, no, dude, you can, if you look at the picture and you zoom in and and, and uh, spin it, you can read the names. Uh, Rick, uh, Rickard is left. List. And this one looks like oh my god, Fleur. So whoa, 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 whoa. so you can spin it and read the names. If on you the if you like like uh open her picture of the, her her gun, rotate like save it, rotate the picture and zoom in. You can see it says like Rickard. Oh, or... no, that's Richard. That's her brother. Oh, you're right. Oh so, my god. So all the way back that. To be fair, they likely just put that name on there and they're like, all right, cool. So his name's actually going to be Richard later. <laughs> Well, and then but, there's El Elwood and Elise. Okay, so Elwood. Okay, so you could see them better than me. That's Elise. That, oh, you're like, right. Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's because everything's orange and dark on my fucking I screen. Yeah, I feel like Elwood. I feel like I know that name. I don't know. Maybe we'll get around to it. Yeah, but she's already. But fired no, off that's two wild. Of these. 
That's dude. That was a good catch, dude. I I have never even thought to look at the bullets. It's I was just so like, oh, cool, okay, dude. that was cool. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, so they so. What likely happened was, and not to discredit Crytek, nobody fucking plans out a story three years ahead of time like this if they don't plan to. So Richard was probably just a name on that bullet, and they looked back, they went, wouldn't it be cool if uh, his name was Richard the whole time? Right, 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 right. And no, that is cool. That's super cool. You know, that is that. sick. <laughs> super cool. There's no details like that on Harbinger other than that there's, like, bones. Like, there's a little skull on the on the side right. guard, and... There's bones on the back underneath the hammer, like a yep. bone crossword. And, cross- and if we read between the lines and really like stretch it here, I read into that as the whole time she still thought her brother was alive and that she would kill him. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So it makes me wonder, like, was he set up? Was there a hint of doubt there? Did she just believe that he caused this? Did he have a hand in the mother's death? Like, cause it always talks about her mistakes, her hand in this, but she's trying to find and kill her brother who she believes is still alive. And back into his story, it it mentions that the letter, she believes that letter set forth all of the events that led to her mother's death, the letter that he died. So that tells me, I think that she from day one believed that that letter was falsified or just wrong or incorrect but the mother did not believe that she believed it was real and it led her down a dark path maybe and mistakes were made uh bad decisions and these all compounded into her mother dying during her spy work as a union spy yeah and that's what so cuz it was saying that she it also seemed like she was retired from the service and then richard or rick i don't know how you get rick, rick from richard but whatever um he followed in the, in those footsteps and like joined up. So who knows? Like the, but that's cool. Like, uh, like it, it's definitely a solid theory too. I'm yeah. And if you, well, and, with, and, and I know for a fact that with the new lore entries like this, Crytek is very particular on the wording of each and every sentence because now they care uh, in that deep of a detail. So like, yeah, Rick knew he didn't deserve to be greeted with open arms, so he did make mistakes, or that could be referring to just the fact that he never, ca- uh, you know, quote unquote, never called. He never, e- never uh, emailed, never sent her a letter or anything. Uh, you know, right. never, never sent an email. You know, while he was out at uh, hunting heads out, in Louisiana. Out in the shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, he even said it in his um uh, thing that he was very um. I guess the best way to describe it is that he was considered dead and then his papers got like put away. So he couldn't, he couldn't live on. He had to just kind of do dirty work. Right. Yeah, the type of work that needed an iron mask, having to hide his identity and use his skills that he's picked up to continue to be useful to people. A mercenary for hire, perhaps. And yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking it's so. so cool. Cool. Yeah. And then with the harbinger, Harbinger almost feels like it's not related to her, but in a way said this, um, um, unless again, I'm fucking reading the wrong one, but I'm almost a hundred percent positive. That was hers. Well, and then here we go. More mentioning of the, uh, the mistakes he's made that we don't know about the brave charge, his pistol, uh, the prodigal son was issued the Scott field model three swift on enlisting. It stayed in service with him long after his apparent death, both a reminder of the mistakes he'd made and a means to never make them again. Yeah. The, so there's yeah, exactly. I, I think there's been some shit that happened not only with him, but even with uh, Sarah, the prodigal daughter. And then, cause her pack says this Caldwell pack changed hands twice before arriving in new Orleans. Once in the dead of night when it was turned against its owner in a midnight scuffle and later at the break of dawn, when it was pried from the hands of a corpse. In the bayou, the sound of its familiar crack in the distance was a harbinger of merciless retribution. So somebody tried to do some shit to Sarah is what that what I'm fucking hearing there. Or maybe it was her mother that got killed and she took That is also true. That could be it. It was so it was either Sarah or the uh Ooh, oh, or wait, you hear me out here? And I know this is a little bit of a stretch, but it talks about her mistakes and and like blame. She blames other people for the stuff happening to her. Maybe she ended up killing her mother, 
even by accident in a scuffle over the gun in the dark. True. Could be very true as well. It's a stretch, but hey, you know, I'm, I'm, brainstorm I'm brainstorming here. Everybody, oh, comments, go. Go now, comments. Pause the video. Go comments. Tell us how, what your theories and how you think about this, and then come back up and then hit play again. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> and now but that yeah. we've discussed the siblings... We get to discuss the whole fort that greatly impacted her brother's life. As I talk about Fort Armick. Scroll, 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 scroll. Scroll, <clears throat> scroll, 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 scroll. The, so, and by the way, I, I read their, uh, their Lauren stories verbatim, folks, because they're so short. Uh, but for Fort Karmic, I'm definitely breaking it down to be more digestible for you and adding in more words to make it sound better. Uh, just so that you're aware, so that if you go and read the wiki entry yourself, know that I'm not reading it verbatim. <clears throat> the year 1812. The U.S. government embarked on an ambitious program to better fortify and protect their territorial waters. The Revolutionary War was careening to a close after the hard-fought Battle of New Orleans. But this was not without great risks. Without adequate defenses, the fear of British invasion was not without merit. Thus, key locations were handpicked in places around what would eventually become these United States. One such location of particular value was found close to some waterways in the south, deep in Louisiana, where the once sturdy and proud wooden walls of Fort Carmack were hoisted and fortified against the elements and redcoats alike. The fort was named after Daniel Carmack, a U.S. Marine Corps hero known for his bravery in the aforementioned Battle of New Orleans. Stocked with a 360-degree bird's-eye view, a series of artillery to back, and easy access to the waterways traveling through Louisiana, the fort was a testament to freedom's strength and never waving, never wavering. Oh, this was until the next greatest conflict of our nation, the Civil War. The Brothers War. Brother against brother, bodies stacking by the thousands, both forces pushed toward and back each other, losing and reclaiming lands as they shuffled around these fractured states. It was Fort Carmack that housed Confederate troops during this conflict, until it was wrested from the Confederacy during a brief but bloody siege. Now in Union hands, it would remain for the rest of the war. Carmack's keen location left it as an integral resource going forward for the surrounding lands of Louisiana. Or Carmack became the backbone of federal power and Southern Reconstruction, not only as a place for agents for, of the government to be housed safely from any rebellion, but also being additionally utilized as an internment camp when needed. Beyond Reconstruction, stepping forward into the future, Railroads began to spread like fire across the world, claiming more lands than the British and Confederacy could have ever fathomed. The Industrial Revolution and its consequences be damned. Though with the advancement of our peoples and our country, so do the old bastions of freedom fall to decay and rot. Fort Carmack being no exception. Today he stands derelict. Many of its walls and pieces, his utilities, useless. The artillery, malfunctional. This was not entirely due to the Industrial Revolution, but also changes in the uh, nearby landscape. The waters that once flowed beside the fort are now mostly dried up, its landscapes changed forevermore. The walls battered to pieces by numerous hurricanes. It was officially decommissioned in 1885, where he sat indefinitely, sinking further into the mud below. Those living near his once glorious walls paid no mind to the fort now that once built their town. To doom them to irrelevance. So, as we see the fort today, obviously in game you could see it. The logs that once uh, fortified the walls are, are decrepit, fall into the ground, strewn across, some, some on fire. All the flags are torn down, the window is destroyed. Many walls have giant openings in them that you can just walk through. Fucking the one of the entrances is, is in the goddamn outhouse. You can walk through the wall through the outhouse. It is, it is decrepit. It is falling apart at the seams. But you can see how amazing that fort would have looked in its prime. It's one of my favorite places to have fights. Actually, I really love 
the uh the verticality of it and and like the uh the scaffolding fights as you're going around the walls those are awesome and like everybody hiding in the little cubbies i, I love for karmic dude well uh, for for bolden i think you're thinking of i'm gonna kill myself um <laughs> okay but still no so i described the wooden walls and stuff it so for karmic's a lot of bricks and shit it's the giant building with the two walls or, or two buildings yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, and then you can see the uh, the prisons within it. So, uh, for anybody listening, uh, I'm not stupid. I'm just misguided. Uh, but either uh, way, I still love well, Fort Karmic, and a lot of the things I describe still apply. <laughs> still apply. Um, no, and honestly, like, with Hunt's naming scheme, like, we have two forts, we have two prisons, we have three churches. Um, so, it's easy to kind of get them confused. Especially because you also... Oh uh, wait, sorry. What'd you say? I missed miss that. So, and I said you you haven't played in a while, uh, as well, because I imagine people who haven't played in a while they say fort and they have a very specific fort in their head. Yeah. I forget. I forget that pelican. Yep. I like, for example, I forget that pelican is a prison sometimes. Yeah, like, exactly. It's rough. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's like oh okay yeah no that's the prison. And because when I think prison, I think of Nichols prison in uh, Lost and Delta, which is, you know, a hop, skip and a jump away from Fort Karmic. Um, but no, both of the and we'll get into Fort Bolden on another day. We'll probably have that with uh, uh, Sergeant Bridgewater, I would say. Most likely. Like having him do that and um, and probably somebody else that's related to Fort Bolden or something like that. But they're both still very like. You know, it's kind of like one of those things. They're, they're the forts having a fort to fight in, regardless, is interesting, right? Like that's kind of one of the uh, the interesting things about Hunt Showdown. I can't remember a firefight I had in PvP where it was like a, di- a like a dilapidated fort on either side, and it's two different forts too, because you had Fort Bolden, which is like you were like you were mentioning wood. And then you have Fort Karmic, which was made out of the brick. So yeah. it's like, oh, so wow, we get both. Knowing now that you've corrected me, uh, <laughs> I, I would like to recant my previous statement. I'm not a huge fan of Fort Karmic, uh, now that I'm visualizing it correctly in my head. I have had some really good fights there. I will say that fighting inside of Fort Karmic is like a horror game. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, go up the, I go up the fucking elevator that's almost a dumb waiter. I get to the top and immediately get my chest cavity blown open uh, by somebody just sitting there waiting for me. It's rough, but I still do enjoy it. I, I've had really good fights, really good clips in a lot of my videos from the fights that... I, I said the scaffolding. It's a similar prospect. The, uh, the walls, they're mm-hmm. wide enough that you could stand on them, obviously. Big staircases to get you up there. A lot of good fights there, shooting up towards the roof. Uh, being shot down, for, uh, like shooting down from the roof is really nice. The elevator is something to fight over. The stairs, the ladders. There's so much verticality in there and a lot of places to hide and get the perfect headshot. Uh, lying in wait. You, you, can, uh, you can crouch, sneak around the inside of it to try and get around to somebody on top. A lot of fun stuff happens there. And even, correct me if I'm wrong, there is scaffolding, stairs, uh, rather scaffolding and around the entire outside of it wrapping around right uh, in the, in the in on the building uh, there's yeah on both buildings there is scaffolding and like you know ledges and stuff like that that you can like kind of hang yeah. off of yeah those those are fun too there's so many good fights cuz you like you get a bullet flying towards you and you've got 13 places you got to look <laughs> Honestly, sometimes it's not even in the damn compound. Because fun fact about Fort Karmic, because this is way before I had met most of the people I play Hunt with now, uh, is with one of my older friends. We were playing um, duos, and the bounty just happened to be a Fort Karmic. And I am looking over there, and I'm you know using my Winnie C and FMJ. Um, I'm in the fucking window of the boss layer at Sweet Bell. You know, that that big, like, double window that has the, like, little mini ramp going up it? Yep. I was in that window. I see somebody on the top of Fort Karmic. <laughs> and there's been a firefight the whole time. I was like, you know what? Let me aim. And I think I still have it somewhere. But 
let me aim and I fired and I got a headshot and I killed them. <laughs> <laughs> it was 263 meters, roughly. And I was like, that is the longest range headshot I will ever get in this game. And it was with iron sights and FMJ on a Winnie. <laughs> so it's <sighs> Fort Karmic is fun. I definitely like it in its current iteration. Its original iterations were fine, but they added more movement, more options. Like the a lot of the scaffolding was kind of like open. Um there's more cover on a lot of the scaffolding now. Uh, there's more ways to kind of move in and out of the fort. Um, I definitely like it in its current state. I don't think they really could do much to improve it. Um, I, and I like that it's one of the few areas in the game that actually has working barbed wire on some of the areas. Like True. The, the south side is actually one of my favorite cheeky ways to get into the fort where you can like climb up that like little beam and then climb onto that uh the thing I want to say it's the south west wall north south east west uh, yeah I think it's southwest wall where it's basically near that uh the elevator to get up the uh lower building yep. and um or the the elevator to get onto the southern building like it, it literally pops you up right there and it's a I've used it to my advantage for a uh for a couple of different um, ambushes. And the, the tunnels, not so much on the one side, but the tunnel on, like, if you're facing the south side, the left side, um, where just that long, like, tunnel hallway, and it has, like, the that creepy dark room. Yep. Like, it just, it has a lot of really interesting design elements. Yeah. Um, it mixes a lot of things other compounds have in strides and has them all in little bits here and there. So it's a multi layered type of compound. Yeah. But I can um, also see why people would uh would be like, oh <laughs> like, I mean, the same principle as Nichols Prison. Going inside of it sucks fuck sometimes and it makes it really unfun. But that being said, there's a lot of ways at least at Fort Karmic to get around that Nichols prison you just kind of have to <laughs> kind of have to manhandle it and pick a pick a staircase get up there and try and get in there before they blow you to smithereens but at least before karmic you've got a variety of angles a variety of entryways what i would like to see post engine update if they wanted to add a little cellar beneath the buildings that connects both of them underneath because you know you know you know sure they would do that building this to have storage between both buildings uh mm -hmm. and, and to move prisoners as well i would love to see just a small little cellar area that connects a basement beneath both buildings that would be my last uh my last addition to fort karmic that would make it for me because that would be awesome for sneaking up on people and hiding the bush wookieing all that stuff lurking if you're trying to get a necro off would be awesome from underneath yeah i wonder if they didn't do that because i don't know how well that would work since it's like so close to the water you know what i mean like right right well it'd be a flood hazard um yeah well because i could see it in bolden yeah because bolden doesn't have a whole lot of water around it um Though Bolden, you can like the amount of like shifty stuff you can do in Bolden is insane. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying it wouldn't be de like completely fucking destroyed down there, but it would still be traversable. Yeah, imagine having it like there's water, like it's waterlogged down there. Yep. So, so you can so you can use it to rotate, but you got to go real slow because you got those wet footsteps. Yeah, be interesting. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if they're gonna look at that just because I know they typically. Cause like they added the one where they 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 widened that hole on the one side where the cannon was sticking out of, so yep. people could get in easier. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I would have to see how they would implement it versus because it's an interesting idea, but also it could also be a fucking nightmare. Yeah, and forgive me for not mentioning it, folks, but uh, Fort Karmic comes into play with these stories. If you look at the trailer. Uh, for the Reckoning Sun, I believe his trailer is literally at Fort Karmic. Am I? Yeah, he's fighting on the top of the. Yeah. Yep. Yep. He's running building. across the scaffolding between the buildings. He's fighting on the on the roof where everybody camps. 
It's awesome. Yeah, he, he gets stuck up there. He gets marooned. He has to defend himself. Flashbacks of his sister, PTSD, visualizations. It's awesome. And then, those of you who aren't aware, that is actually where prod the prodigal son was going to be buried. If they had a body. <laughs> Obviously, they didn't. Uh, yeah. But that's where, that's where his last rites would have been read. That's where his service would have been, his military service. Probably buried in an unmarked grave during the circumstances. So, for him and his sister's stories to coalesce and meet in the middle yet again at such an iconic place for both of them, being that their, their mother would have been uh, a spy through Fort Karmic, they, uh, they both in their service would have had to been through, uh, gone through Fort Karmic. The whole family has stepped through that fort and had stories to tell there. So it's, it's very cool to see not only a new family of hunters being added officially, but also to have them all touch the same compound throughout their lives in different decades. Very cool. Yeah. I think it's super awesome. I like, I like when the, uh, how they're doing that too. And I think what we'll do li little, little teaser for, uh, later in the podcast, uh, podcast lifespan. Because I'm working on getting to Prestige 100, I'll have all of the stuff unlocked, all of the uh, the lore digestibles for not only the monsters but the uh, the guns. What an integral resource for the podcast, folks! Can we give this guy a can we, can we give this guy a fucking uh, pog in the chat? <laughs> I we don't have a chat. Uh, go to the comments if you didn't type anything else in the comments and you're just now possibly gonna make a comment. Give me like a. Give me a dead man walking. For our <laughs> boy here. Yeah, appreciate it. But yeah, no, I'm gonna. I'm a, one of one of my goals after that is to get because I'm sure they'll have more weapons that I haven't done yet. But like to get every every weapons little, you know, book of weapons lore and see who's who's tied to what. Um and. The dark gods help me whenever I get to the fucking railroad hammer because that is just going to kill me. Like I, I can feel it in my soul. It's going to just, I'm going to evaporate. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I, th I think, and that'll be interesting because I think us also going over the lore now, um, us doing the the kind of easier accessible stuff first, and then we get into the nitty gritty as we're unlocking stuff. And then it's like, yeah. oh, well, you know, this is something from this one. You know, this is something from that one. It'll be fun. Like, I think it's an easier and more fun way to do it. Yeah, I think what would also help um, is if before the next big event comes out, like, say, the teaser comes out and there's a couple weeks before it actually drops, that would be the perfect time to recap a previous event. I agree. Uh, they're at, they actually said the new event is on the 15th of August, same day as the engine. And the map. We've, we've got time to prep a huge, big lore episode, which would take a lot longer than these other ones. It would mostly be focused entirely on lore. So, if you guys really like the lore stuff, you would want to definitely subscribe and hit the bell to be ready for those when they come out. So, when they drop, you could be right on the money. If you're, if you decided to become a member, you could get it probably a day early. Be sick. Uh, but I'm really excited for those big, giant lore episodes because we can both talk about stuff. There's going to be so much to cover. And those ones we might even do live because it would be really cool to have you guys theorizing with us in live about different story beats together. It would be very cool. So look forward to those. Yeah, I agree. And I'm I'm still working on getting the lore videos for the previous events. Okay. I just haven't I just haven't had time with other stuff and things, but I might get another one up this week. Fuck yeah. Because Monroe was killing me on the lore loadout challenges. It's terrible. <laughs> Don't mind me just dropping uh, $154 to get the collector's edition while all the DLCs are 68% uh, off and not 69 because Crythek didn't want to say it. <laughs> so funny. You missed it, David. It w why not make it 69%? Why make it 68 You edged me, David Fifield. That's a sentence I never thought I'd fucking say. Oh god. oh god, please don't fucking nobody send this to David when I'm uh, applying to be a uh, 
a fog whisperer for Crytek later. Don't fucking don't none of you. I'll find you. I'll fucking find you. I'm Knight of the Hunter, and all of a sudden he comes back to this episode. <laughs> <laughs> like this one in particular. He's like, oh yeah, no, I really like that DLC. I want to hear what they have to say about it. <laughs> you aged me, David. <laughs> oh, <fuck>. God. <laughs> It's fucking ridiculous. Oh, uh, this is fun. These are always fun. I look forward to these so much, dude. It's oh so yeah, fun. I agree. It's, it's it's a lot of fun. It's it's a way to love hunt without the fr- the possible frustrations of each match, and like it really gets my brain like creatively thinking about things. It's, it's I love these so much. Oh yeah, no, this is actually one of the reasons I decided to do lore loadout challenges, like us talking about the lore and stuff. And uh, I'm applying. Oh shit! You really did buy them. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! How did you see that? I was checking the activity, to see if there was an update. Um, because if you hit like your name and then hit activity, you could actually see like posts from games that you follow and stuff like that. But oh, it also... did, it just, did it just have like a giant list, like like thirty DLCs have been added to a very flamboyant horse's uh, stuff? Yeah, page? yeah. No, it literally it literally just did this to say. A very flamboyant horse now owns 49 more games. I'm like, what the actual fuck? <laughs> Take a screenshot of that, bro. Fucking holy shit. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I thought, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm dead ass, ass man. I'm working full time now, it, like, destroying my hands at, at my job. I, I've, I've earned all the DLCs at Hunt all at once while they're on a massive sale, saving me $280. And, and the best part about it? Is that now going forward, all of those hunters that come out within a day, they're going to be like six fifty. Yeah, because now that you've bought the collector's edition, you could do it again when the next one comes up. Pro tip for people who want to do stuff like that: I know not everybody has the money or the want to have all of the skins, but that's a way to do it. So can you like, so can you like rebuy the collector's bundle after new stuff gets added? Yeah, that's what I do every time. Oh, is it discounted then? Yeah, six uh, six fifty ish. Ooh. Also, I posted in your DM the uh, screenshot. It's pretty funny. It's so fucking funny, dude. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. It's just a fucking wall of text. That's Holy why I was. Shit. Oh, oh, I can't wait, uh, dude. I hope somebody sees this in the video and they just die laughing. This could be in the fucking yeah. thumbnail, dog. I'm not gonna do that. It better be so fun. Yeah, I'll, I'm, I'll, I'm making this a steep community post right now. I'm literally. So I just rated it up. <laughs> I just <laughs> like. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Uh, so, so uh, we finally we've covered our lore. We've covered our community. We've covered all that. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about today? We now we were gonna make this a shorter episode, not two and a half hours. Uh, we're at a minute. We're at an hour and a half now, give or take like ten minutes or fifteen minutes. I gotta cut out, so we're doing better on time. I didn't. Yeah. Think, was there really anything else so pressing that I'm like we have to talk about nah. this? There were a few. I don't think so. I think we're fine. Like yeah, I think there we're were a few, there's like Reddit posts and stuff that we really want to talk about, but I think I'm more saving those for when. We have a day where we're like, oh, we don't have a lot to talk about, which will probably be the the next episode because un- it's in between big updates and it's in between big announcements. It's probably going to be just the lore and then whatever we can talk about. That would probably be a really good community interaction type of episode. So that'd be a good one. Yeah, I think so. And like I said, it's like there's just different shit. So right, right. Uh, not a big deal. Well, well, Demon, is there anything else you wanted to talk about before I start to sign us off? Uh, nah, not really. I think we're good to go. Um, like I said, eventually we'll dive into the history of Hunt and like how it's progressed over the years. Yes, but definitely. I think I think I think doing that and the event stuff closer to when all of that launches is probably a better idea. Hundred percent. I'm definitely on board for that. Yeah. So. Otherwise, I think we're good. Like, I think it was a fun episode. It was interesting. We have more <sighs> to talk about in the lore. True. So. And, and the intro was so much shorter. Yeah. All right, no folks. <laughs> Will you go ahead? <laughs> I, heard no, the, I, I, I heard the name. Say, say <laughs> his fucking name. It said no, no Joshua's this time. Like, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll find them. We'll find them. After, when they get to the point in the video where I start accidentally making a couple allusions to uh, Fort Bold instead of Fort Karmic. 
Uh, instead of looking at the disclaimer on the screen that I'm going to put, they're immediately going to go to the comments and say, I don't know what I'm talking about and that I should stop making videos. Josh will be there in spirit, if, uh, if not literally there. I'll see him. So, <clears throat> everybody, if you made it to the end here, love you guys and appreciate you so much. I've had so much fun starting this whole community project with Dead Man, this podcast, and I'm so glad that so many of you awesome people told us how you felt last time for a podcast that I thought would be literally 10 views dead in the water. We got like 228 views. That's a lot for something like this. Nobody does on podcasts, dude. That's awesome. And it's all thanks yeah. to you guys. You guys are here always supporting us, supporting me, supporting this community and like taking all the cool, unique things we try to do and just telling us how much you love them. And that's all it takes for us to be motivated to make more. So like, I can't thank you guys enough. It's all the likes, comments, the subscriptions, all those little things that are just a click or a couple clacks on a keyboard for you. It really means the world. It really does. It's awesome. Oh, fuck, dude. I agree. Um, and checking out our streams and doing, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yet again, plug yourself. Where can they find you? Uh, so it's still, as of today, uh, dead berserk here on twitch but i'm i'm counting the days i literally look every day to like change it over to dead man's howl but the youtube <laughs> will be is dead man's howl um i actually and horse will talk about this at some point but i just i would think i'm going to be teaming up with another content creator soon Ooh. and uh we might be able to do like a trios thing because he he was funny like uh me and uh it, we actually teamed up on stream and we teamed in duos which has never seen any where like it, it was me and uh, my partner and him and his partner, we all teamed up. That's awesome. So it'd be dude. really cool. Yeah, so, no, but I, he, I'm game. That sounds fun, dude. Yeah. So what? Like, and he, I've seen a couple of his videos. They're really neat. Like he does like little like you know compilations of like, oh, I think that you know this is really cool. Like he just did a shot bolt video, and I, being a fan of the shot bolt, also it like you know a lot of fun. So, but yeah. He was like, yeah, dude, let's all team up and do some shit. And I was like, yeah, dude, I got some other content creators I'm friends with, too. So who knows? We might end up having a whole fucking network. <laughs> so I'm, I'm telling you, dude, it all starts here with these two hour long, uh, essentially powwows where we talk about Hunt. It all starts here. Oh, yeah. So quick so, recap, y'all, just for anybody who uh, was, you know, shit faced during the beginning of this episode when I gave the, the preamble and now they're sober. Uh, bless you. I drink some water. Remember, Iceberg coming out soon. Wait for these next episodes of the podcast. Hit the bell and subscribe so that you can not miss them. I love having you here. If you want to get your voice heard or even collaborate on my upcoming community project that is currently underway still uh, with the discussing the balance of Hunt Showdown, forum post below, or the, rather the Microsoft forum is below. You can go ahead and fill it out. You don't have to sign in or anything. We have memberships now, so if you want to support me monetarily without going to the Patreon, it's just a click away. Love you for that, but you don't have to if you don't want to or don't have the money. Take care of yourself first, please. And to God, always you first, me second, okay? And we hit 500 subs, y'all. We finally fucking did it. So thank all of you so much. It's one small step in what could possibly be such a loving, awesome, fun career with all of you by my side, our sides, together in this community for who knows how long. So, all of you from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. And let us know how you feel in the comments per usual. We're always looking forward to your comments. We read them. We love them. Send us viewer emails as well. Viewer mail is fucking great. Uh, tell us your stories, your experiences. Don't be a Joshua. Emails in the description along with all of Dead Man's socials, all the links for all this below. Thanks again, everybody, and uh, stay blessed. Fuck yeah. All right, let's fucking get this video up and start looking at this bad boy. Let's see. Yeah, I'll get it up on mine because I think uh, when I was watching your stream. Oh earlier... my god, somebody unsubscribed. Maybe that was that guy I killed and he came over and unsubscribed. Oh, did it go down one? Yep. <laughs> I went down <laughs> one today. I stream and it goes down one. That's crazy. Some guy heard me talking about my hand earlier. He's like, fuck this guy. I don't want to fucking subscribe to a cripple. No. What?
Fuck, fuck this dude, bro. I fuck this do. dude. Speaking of which, I need to sub to you on my business account. <laughs> aren't you? Aren't you so sweet? Let's see. Uh, get this window capture up. Uh, uh, one second. I'm also going to uh. There you go. Fuck that other guy. Um, I'm also going to pull it up on my side because for some reason your stream was like 30 seconds behind for me. I don't know why. It, I think it, it's always going to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like on Twitch, usually I get it like fairly close, but you know, it that is just nature of streaming. Hello, I'm Dennis Schwartz, Design Director for Hunt Showdown. Dennis! We're going to talk about our key learnings from player surveys, community feedback, and data gathered over the course of the last start. five events. Yep. These lessons continuously shape our thinking for future events. Yeah, just, go to, just go to like 14 and then we'll hit play. 14 and hit play? Yep, just hit Specs, play. Yep. Traits, weapons, yep. and other right. mechanics. Thank you for your contributions to them. I never thought Dennis would sound like that, but I forget that Crytek's German. Recap. First, let's talk about Devil's Yeah. Game. This event pushed It's been a while since he's been on some the element of choice between packs and exclusive traits. This we're first round Devil's of Moon, yes. traits were designed to shake up the gameplay experience and experiment with I remember my video on packs. Devil's Moon also brought with it our very first wild card condition, the Inferno. Though it also predated our first wild card contract, which didn't appear until Tide of Shadows. Our design goal is to have an even distribution of pick rate for our event packs. But we missed the mark with Devil's Moon as the Grounded Pack, which featured both Shadow and Death Cheat, made up 85% of our total usage. The Yo. Lunar Pack made up 10%. I was one of those. Only this is so cool pick. because like, I this made videos talking about this, and now they're like, yeah, okay, we're admitting it publicly. Here's the numbers. Was still judged a win for That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> lessons were learned. Similarly, our new wildcard condition, the Inferno, changed our existing maps radically. Which was initially well received, but resulted in some fatigue as the event went on. The Since PMO then, we confirmed a lot of valuable lessons about players' preferences in accessing wildcraft conditions, and received similar feedback for Thunder Shower, The Dark Inferno, and Ash Bloom. With each update, we were tuning just the frequency of these conditions appearing and their impact on the play space and game mechanics. Okay, so they're gonna bring back old stuff. Big fan of that. Moving mm -hmm. into the tight event trilogy, our goal was to better understand your level of satisfaction with the events and new additions being made. Alongside usage statistics and tons of great feedback we gathered from social media, we began publishing two public surveys for each event. Tide of Shadows was the first event we ran surveys for, and we received well over 20,000 responses. 20,000 is a we fucking a lot for a survey. We feedback on events, weapons, wildcard conditions, and game mechanics oh, yeah. to help us make Hunt Showdown the best game it can be. Please continue to take part in surveys and reach out via our official Discord and other social media channels to share your Yeah, thoughts. no, and I legit tell people do that shit all the time. Oh, of course, dude. The three event packs on Tide of Shadows received a healthy distribution of usage compared to Devil's Moon, but still had room for improvement. This time around, we made sure that Death Cheat was available to all packs. We also experimented with different configurations of packs mm. and how to pledge yeah, one what's... of points. In general, yeah, Death Cheat. I wonder if I was going to talk about the fact that so it was bugged. Had something new to offer, but we also had some old favorites come back for more. Infinite Eventually, some of these experiments turned into full, long lasting additions to the core game. As the live events progressed, data showed that in some cases we matched our own expectations, while in others, certain packs dominated in usage. Sometimes they started out with a healthy split before one pack emerged to come out on top. Like in Tide of Corruption, when the Inferno pack took over the lead at 49% usage, while the Death pack at 27 and the Demented pack at 24 That was miserable. In other cases, like during Tide of Isolation, that, we saw God. some normalization between packs only halfway through. Yeah, you would have hated it. With the ground packs I hated it. I stopped playing. Peak with 60% before dropping down to 38%. As far as pack traits go, Shadow Leap specifically was very Shadow Leap was stupid. It was so disgusting. It was too good. I, the game too much. It was, the funny thing is that it actually was. I feel like it would just made the game too fast. Like you could just cut out half of the movement in the game so people could get from place to place really fast and it sped up the entire gameplay. Yeah, but it's reliant on AI well, and it also took been a great your health away. To introduce new weapons and equipment yeah, but like Redu shot. Some of these have turned out to be great additions out of the box, while others oh, yeah. struggle to find their place in the arsenal. Among the best received weapons oh, yeah, are the, no, and ghoul, the but also and the Bornheim Silencer, as well as the baseball bat and the katana. 
Both the Marathon and Maker have also been solid yeah, additions, both even of some of their variants are not in widespread use and their survey scores reinforced them being less popular additions. Less successful additions were the Upper Mud, Derringer Penny Short, yeah, nobody uses the, the Upper Mud, by the way, the literally Beetle, nobody, and the Dolph variants in Custom Ammo. We have room to improve these additions further and touch most of them up again for August release. People were mad about the upper map before it came out and then nobody used it. <laughs> Moving forward, well, now it's better than the upper cut. By first reducing yep. the amount of new custom ammo types introduced during events. And secondly, by rotating more Thank options in and out with future updates God. to help shake things up and encourage players to try out different combinations. We clearly don't need further Dolch ammo added to the game anytime soon and are considering removal of some that are currently there. Yes, Dennis. In terms yes, of things to work with players, weapon inspection first appeared in Tide of Corruption with overwhelmingly positive scores. This was expected given how long yes. the request for this feature had Bad. been coming in from the community. Literally, it's been coming Roger, in. Roger, yes, Queen! Our first wild target, Roger, was initially received as only okay, so cool. but data gathered from the second survey showed that by the end of the event, she was more appreciated with a good overall satisfaction rate. Notably, the groups who had the biggest change in sentiment over Roger were the ones that included players who've played less than 500 hours of hunt. Lessons learned around Roger have led to some improvements for future wild targets, their potential rewards as side objectives, and the overall difficulty of defeating them. Yeah, I wonder what kind of side this objectives they can also introduced the them. concept of pledge marks being used to unlock sealed rewards found in the world. Sealed rewards this have was been good. very well received. Specifically, the full health restoration, this is cool. master I wish I got to play with this. bounty token for pledge marks, and the sealed cash Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to come back. This encouraging result has us looking to expand and refine the mechanics for sealed rewards, which you can hear more about when we come back to discuss the lead up to our next event, which goes live with the engine upgrade on 15th August. See what I mean? It's going yeah. to... Gonna come back Our during that event weekly for sure. The challenge system has yet to meet player expectations since being it sucks. introduced. In it's bad. Mode. The weekly challenge system suffers from three main problems. It's better than the first, first one, but still, it's bad. <laughs> oh, 100%. Event, then you miss out on that week of event points, which is quite punishing. Next, completing a weekly challenge set requires players to constantly adjust their loadout and playstyle, which starts to feel like a chore after a handful of challenges. It gets Lastly, really bad. Certain yep. challenges require specific custom ammo, which new players. I don't mind it because I played too long, but I get it. Yet. Thank you we for bringing up prestige players, here, Dennis. Bless. We will discuss our changes to the weekly challenge system in a future video, addressing these primary complaints. Thank you, Dennis. Dennis. Just play with somebody who doesn't fucking years, uh, prestige have <laughs> and have them do your challenges. Their lost chunks of health during a mission. As a result, we've experimented with different ways of destroying health chunks during most of our events. Overall, I'm, I'm happy with the, uh, the addition of more ways to restore lost. I, I, I'm happy with chance, the packs being in the world. I'm so happy with that. Them. Or not the packs, we the traits from packs. We want players to have a chance to come back during a mission rather than yeah. being pushed to extract without a bounty token. Peacekeeper is the best example of where yeah, we got the balance wrong like, restoring that's health chunks. The worst. Restoring lost health chunks was too yeah, easy and yeah, giving the ability to revive friends while teammates went too far, opening the door for exploits and frustrating long stalemates especially with fights away from the boss layers. Learning from this, we will tread far more carefully whenever a mechanic is considered that reduces the penalty of dying repeatedly to the point of red skull mark. I'm surprised you didn't learn from death cheat, motherfucker. We hope that you enjoyed some of the insights Stop from the perspective and how we try to find the balance between sentiments, surveys, and data. Which are always well, death cheat was surface. a little different we'll than waffle. We'll it's a different vibe, yeah. Relaunch and what to expect from it. Well, it, uh, it just worked different. Yep. Because it, um... Because Death Sheet, it was just like you kept the Hunter and it didn't affect your current game, right? Like, right. Waffle affected the second you touched another Hunter. Like, right. No, I, and so it, this was this was great, actually. I, people were complaining about communication, and then every time a video comes out, they're like, yeah, okay, but where's the rest of it? Like, this was actually awesome, because they went to a lot of the, the events in the situations where there was everybody talking about a problem. But Crytek wasn't saying anything about the problem. And a lot of people felt yeah. it caused, like... I don't want to say clan wars. That's such a fucking fuck term. Uh, it caused, like, class war. It caused, like, a class war between everybody. Where half of the people were gaslighting... Felt like they were gaslighting others. And half of the other people knew they were right. Or whatever. And, like, everybody's fighting in the middle. It just, it just made the community fucking throw hands at each other. But now they're saying, all right... We fucked up. Here's the data to show that we fucked up, and we knew that the whole time, <laughs> and just right. it said nothing. But we were working on it. All right. Right, 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 right. Well, and that and that's the thing is that like they were very communicative in the past, and like 
they did get silent, and I feel like part of it was that part of it I felt like they would over promise in some ways, and then that was had its own set of backlashes. So I think what they're doing now is that once they find that middle ground yep. of like, hey, this is what we can communicate. Um, like I just got a I got a reply actually a couple days ago about the cheater, and they oh, said shit. we. Yeah, they said we can't go into what we're uh, what we're doing as far as like what uh, what kind of um like process they're taking, but I gave them a fucking video, which is what you absolutely should do. Like if you're going to oh, yeah. call out somebody for cheating, it is easier for them to look at that. Yep, due diligence. Yep. Yep. And um but they they said it's like, "Hey, just so you know, we are looking into it. I hope it didn't impact your in, uh, enjoyment of the game, but absolutely understand if it did. Um, and they're not talking about that that one moment. They're just talking about the enjoyment of Hunt Showdown overall. Right, right. Um, so I think they are communicating. They just, they do have to probably keep some things close to the chest. They don't want to announce something because also look at like some of the other shit they announced that just never came to pass. Um, I can think of two or three things at least. Like they were gonna say, oh yeah, no, we can. Uh, we're gonna have crafting in missions. That, that would have been cool. Happened. That would have been sick. It would have been interesting, but I don't uh, like playing the game as it is now. I don't know how it would have fit in. It would like, have to like be real... something somewhat insignificant, but interesting and cool. Like it could yeah. be a major component of like, like, hey, this whole event, everybody can add random attachments to their guns. It would have to be something like, if you collect so much of this bullshit. You could potentially go to this one place and say, put all of your pledge marks into it for the match, and Mr. Sheree would give you a random reward, per se, and it could be like a really good gun that you don't have unlocked, yeah. or like, yeah, like a really expensive would, gun, I should say. Like That would be really I cool. Would like, I would like to see some of that shit come back, if I'm honest, because there's, there was, so there's a couple of events I have in mind. Um, there was like the Shadow, where you basically, like you bought... Um, like point boosters, yeah, and, and you used it for that mission, which was kind of a silly thing, but whatever. Like you get up to like I don't, I don't know, like seventy percent, one hundred and twenty percent. It was dumb. There was like some huge boosts, and uh, you shared it with the team, even though it was like a smelling salt animation or like you know that you used crushed fumes from something, right? And, and I was like, I would love to see that shit come back as like a fucking alternative for like a vit shot or something like that like it still yeah. does the same animation takes the same amount of time but it does the thing of the vit shot it would be cool yeah um but then there was another one um where if you spent blood bonds you bought um like these boxes they were kind of like ammo boxes actually i think it's where the ammo box model came from it was these gift boxes and if you bought like a gold one Everybody in the match got something random. Yep. And I was like, dude, that was actually kind of cool, but nobody did it because it caused blood bonds. <laughs> like, yeah. Even though blood bonds literally fell out of the sky, but like one time I got like ten thousand dollars out of one yep. of them, and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, bro. Yeah. So some of that stuff would be cool to come back. Um, I would like to actually, and we can go into more of this when we actually do an event podcast but i would like to see something like serpent's moon come back oh no okay so in what aspect of it like the like the weather like nah not the weather the the snake tokens okay the it was fun and it was something to do like i like even though i was working full time i was you know i was playing every day it was really fun we had a good time I was playing with people every night or playing solo, whatever it was. And it just, it encouraged that kind of like risk reward aspect that everybody knows is part of Hunt. Um, but I remember me and one of my friends, her and I played, we decided to go into trios that night and we fought everybody on the server and dude, we had like 1200 points by the end of it. <laughs> like we killed so many people. Holy shit. And and it was just, you know, it was like one of those things, like, it's kind of like the pledge marks now. Yep. In a way, but, like, it, it had a little bit of a, an interesting 
a more interesting vibe, and I would like to see it not come back as it was during Serpent Moon, but come back as something else. Like, they kind of take that kind of, like, PvP aspect. Maybe, um, maybe do it for, like, a health uh, bar restore, because Grell and I were talking about it, because they mentioned it in this video, about more stuff to get health chunks back. Do it like PvP. Like, if you kill... If you kill somebody, you get, like, a token off of them. And you, there's a random... Like, there's a couple of points on the map where you could mark it. Uh, people will probably say, do it like the sealed cache. And I was like, no, because that makes it too easy to camp. I would say maybe make it to where it's at each... Um, each... Uh, the hell are those things called? The fucking carts. Make it to where like they're at the carts. You spend it at the cart, and then you can do like a banish. Basically, get the get the health restore or something. Make it a cart at random that only appears to be like known to you when you get that token. That'd be fine. Like a, like cashing in the yeah. dog tag, kind of. It'd be fine. Yeah, you know? yeah. Or or do it at all of them, or even maybe the say... hunting power. <sighs> Yeah, maybe the hunting powers or something. Maybe because there's what there's two now because they're not they're not spread evenly, right? Because the hunting towers in um, uh, Stillwater are on the left side of the map, and there's not a there's like one other on the south side of the map, and that's it. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. Like I don't know what they could do, but having it in a centralized location was a fucking nightmare. Like yeah, I heard it was like really good at first in the event, and then as the time went on, it got really bad. Yeah, and you know that's with something. But I even a couple of times ha like heard people, and I was like, I know they're coming right here, so I'm just gonna wait. Like it just made more sense for me to wait to ambush yep. them while they were coming. Yep. Um, and I actually remember doing that and killing somebody, and they had killed me earlier in the match, but they had left me and not killed me. So, jokes on him, I guess. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of my thing. I want something more even because, as much as I like the burn traits, the burn traits are so unreliable. Yep. That it's I don't think it's a good way to. Yeah. No, dude. Like I, I got the one. Uh, what's the what, what is it? Relentless. The one that let like prevents you from losing a health chunk when down one time. Yeah, relentless. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I dude, I got that fucking burn trade in the game we were playing, and then immediately got downed by the boss. I, I immediately got downed by Vincent. Not this game, but like another game yesterday. I was so pissed. I'm like, I just lost that immediately. Yeah, like, like, I mean, you could say that, or, or, you could say that you got immediate value out of it. I did like, say that when it happened to me. I'm like, wow, value, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, so but pissed I get that it, it didn't happen when I got domed across the map and got a free res. Like, so, so mad that I have no win, no trade value now that I don't have the amount of health for it. Yeah, uh, no, it's it, and you know, it's it's a tough thing to kind of try and balance. Yep, I don't envy Crytek's design team at all because they are balancing a very unique game with very unique systems. 100%. Um, they don't have any other point of reference to look at and go, oh, it worked with these guys. Yeah, no, because you you literally can't look at any other extraction shooter. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, it is a completely different game in every way. Yeah, it, like, Hunt arguably is the most unique shooter on the market. I would right agree. Now. I would agree. So. All right. Well, there's nothing else in this uh, in particular that I think was stupidly important enough for us to talk about here that won't be covered in the rest of this podcast episode that this is just going to get uh, sewn onto. <laughs> but uh, maybe, maybe have it as an addendum at the beginning or something. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Just Perfect. say, hey, th this was recorded at the end. Uh, well, that, that, or... that, I mean, that's what I'm going to That's what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to. I'm just going to have an addendum at the start that's going to say, hey. We record on a weekly basis, one time at the end of the week, and then the video is up the following week. So with these weekly updates coming out, we're going to need to start putting these little addendums on here whenever something important comes out between them. 
we're just gonna tag we're just gonna attach it onto this video uh don't let it sway the rest of the podcast blah 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 um, or, or next or next time we could just do two true like just to like have a little bit more meat to talk about you got early podcast footage read in the chat <laughs> yeah you did. yeah that you did that you did all right well this is uh actually the perfect place to end the fucking stream then because i am hunted out that's three hours straight i'm good i got shit to do all right i was about to say i'm probably gonna go play destiny again because i right. am addicted hell yeah i'll so. catch you demon yeah take it easy bro okay so for anybody left in the chat, Ren, my special, my special friend, uh, I appreciate you hanging out here in the stream with me today. I had some fun. We, did, we, got, we have a lot of fun conversations. Make sure if you're not subscribed, to subscribe, hit the bell, all that stuff. I hate chilling like that. I do it as a meme in game, but I hate it. Uh, and uh, make sure to look out for that coming out tonight. Possibly, probably, I'm telling you, probably tomorrow, the podcast, okay? But I look forward to it, and I hope you all have a good night. Thanks again.